Why are you staring at me that way? Huh? What, what are you doing, son? The only way to prove my loyalty to Tung Chuo is to kill you. What sort of man would kill his own father? One with the strength and ambition to ensure his rightful place as a leader of men who refuses to follow the dictates of a weak little man like you! You'll burn in hell for it. I was born among the people of Mongolia, where only the strongest survive. By murdering the very man who had adopted him, Liu Pu had rid Tung Chuo of his root of opposition, and thus Tung Chuo was now in control of the government. Greetings, Your Excellency. I hope you are well this morning. How so? You're later than usual. What kept you? I beg you to forgive my tardiness. My horse is an old nag, slow of foot and weak with age. Why haven't you told me this before? This is unpardonable. My officers deserve better. Liu Pu, see to it that he's given a steed worthy of his rank. At once, my lord. Only you, Tao Tao, have the courage to stop Tung Tua from destroying the Empire. Now he dies. Cao Cao, what are you doing? Allow me to present you with a small token of my respect, Your Excellency. A rare sword I happen to find called the Blade of the Seventh Kingdom. Of the Seventh Kingdom? How thoughtful. Thank you, Cao Cao. There's an excellent mare saddled and ready, my lord. I can't wait to see her. Will you excuse me, sir? Certainly. Be my guest. Go. That dagger, sire. Lovely, isn't it? A gift from Cao Cao. I see. He claimed it was a gift, did he? A blade with no sheath. A little odd, don't you think? Now that I think of it, he was withdrawing it just as I was about to fall asleep. Go after him, you hear? Sire. Stop him! Now I know you for what you are, you traitor. I'll hunt you down no matter where you run. I'll have your head for this. Traitor! Traitor! Identify yourself. My name is Wang Fu, sir. I'm a peddler by trade. I see. Mm. Very well. Go on. Halt! Huh? It's strange. From all I've heard, you were moving up the ladder of the court hierarchy very quickly. You'd become one of Tong Cho's most trusted advisors and had everything to gain from remaining in his favor. Why throw it all away? Why? You provincial police are just glorified bounty hunters. You couldn't possibly understand. So what would be the point in telling I'll you? be the judge of that. Why, you ask? That should be obvious. As long as Tung Chuo is in control, our country is facing disaster. He must be gotten rid of. So you're a man with a noble cause, is that it? And if I hadn't arrested you, what would you have done then? I would have attempted to overthrow him by enlisting troops from my home province and marching on the capital. And defeated Tung Chuo's entire army? Probably not, but what of that? Win or lose, it would be the right thing to do. It's a matter of justice. That it is. I see. So be it. I am as concerned as you are about the future of our country. But until today, I had met no one who shared my belief that our nation's greatest enemy was the very one who claims to be its benefactor and protector. You are a man worthy of loyalty and respect, and these do I pledge to you. We must go, and quickly. Uh, and your name, sir? I am called Cheng Gong, sir. Cheng Gong. I will never forget what you've done for me. If we talk any longer, my men will become suspicious. Come, we must hurry. My uncle lives at the foot of the mountain. Once we're there, we'll be safe. Chow Chow, what a delightful surprise. How nice to see you. 
I'm afraid your uncle left just a few minutes ago to discuss something with officials of the local government. But I know he'll be happy to see you. Come in and make yourselves comfortable. Please excuse the imposition. We won't be here long. I'll see what I can do about preparing some food for you and your friend. I'll let you know when it's ready. As a child, I spent many happy days here with my uncle and my cousins. I'm told that you come from a noble family. After my birth, my father became an influential eunuch at the Imperial Palace. Cao Cao's father had sacrificed his manhood for the wealth and influence that accompanied his lofty position in the government. His duties included overseeing the castration of young men in the court, who otherwise might have been tempted by female retainers and concubines. Because of what he was, the other children hated me. You're not a boy, you're a girl in disguise, just like your father. Come on, prove that you're a man. Take off your clothes, you sissy. Leave the child alone, you bullies. But I never failed to strike back. It became so violent that my father took me to a specialist who could foretell what a child would become as an adult. I believe you'll develop into a very unusual man. During the troubled times of war, he will be a great hero. During times of peace, he will be known as a thief whose gains will be at the expense of others. One thing is certain, he'll be a ruler of men. <laughs> a thief and a hero and a ruler of men. I feel now as I did then. I intend to fulfill this prediction, and heaven help the man who tries to stop me. Shh. Block all the exits so there's no escape. What are you worried about? It's not like we haven't done this before. <gasps> My uncle. He's brought those government officials back with him to arrest me. I can't believe he'd betray me like this. What will we do? You? Nothing. Just leave it to me. One hard stroke across the throat. Look! They weren't talking about killing us. They were talking about that wild boar they were serving for dinner. I suppose so. An unfortunate mistake, but it's done now. Come. Hurry! Sao so, Sao, how nice to see you. When I heard you'd arrived, I ordered a feast in your honor. It's wonderful to see you too, Uncle, and I appreciate your consideration, but we must be on our way. Yeah! Why? Uh, he's an old man. What harm could he do you? A great deal, I'm afraid. Had he lived, he would have known that I was the one responsible for what happened here tonight. I feel no remorse in rebelling against all mankind, but I cannot tolerate the possibility of anyone rebelling against me. Freeing this man may have been a horrible mistake. His heart is empty, without one iota of remorse, pity, or compassion. As a ruler, he would have been even more ruthless than Tung Chuo. No. If I killed this man, I would be betraying myself, my own principles, my belief in justice and the law. His life is in the hands of fate. Farewell, Cao Cao. Live as you wish, do as you must, but I will pursue my own destiny. Ah, well, he was a small man with no greatness of spirit. Ah. 
Returning home to Jiangsu province, Cao Cao began to raise an army with which to attack Tung Zhuo. Whereupon he falsified an imperial manifesto, urging all men of fighting age to join together in the name of justice and to overthrow Tung Zhuo. Thousands of men responded to the false summons, and soon thereafter a huge coalition army was marching toward Tung Zhuo's capital at Luoyang, under the command of the great warrior General Yun Shao. Tung Chuo gathered his army and met the coalition forces on the battlefield. Facing overwhelming and superior forces, Tung Chuo's army was forced to retreat to a position near Liu Pu's fortress. Suddenly, with a force described as a thundering wave of galloping titans, Liu Pu counterattacked with unnatural ferocity. Forward! Troops are being slaughtered. What? My lord, Lu Pu is only a few minutes away. You must pull back at once. He must be delayed. Are there any volunteers? My lord, I would be honored to be of service. And who are you? My name is Liu Bei of Lo Song. I fight with my brothers under the command of Kong Son Chan. Your title? I have none, my lord. You impudent fool! Who do you think you are? You who will grind you into the ground like a farmer plowing a wheat field. Sir, I have seen Liu Bei in action on the battlefield. He's a valiant warrior. He's also a brilliant general and won several important victories during the Yellow Turban Rebellion. Cao Cao, on your recommendation, I will allow it. However, if you fail, you shall lose your head. Understand? Yes, my lord. Ah! Ah! Oh! You see that? The man is inhuman. Ah! You there! Are you the one called Yu Fu, the piece of cow dung who killed his own father? What? I'd repeat it, but there might be some cows around, and I wouldn't want to insult them. I am Chang Fei, the brother in arms of Quan Yu and Liu Bei. Got a voice? Are you too scared to speak? Scared of scum like you? <laughs> Have a try, brother. But of course, be my kid. Who's that? Now it's my turn. We'll fight another day! Back to the castle! Follow me! Luoyang is the capital of the Empire. It mustn't fall into the hands of the enemy. Claiming it was for the young Emperor's safety, Tung Chuo retreated to the west and established a new capital at Chang'an. For the citizens of Luoyang, it was a time of confusion and fear, and those who hesitated to obey the imperial command were shown no mercy. 